I'm Joe Dallas. And I want to talk about five tips for maintaining sexual integrity. These are taken from my book, The Game Plan, The Plan for Maintaining Sexual Integrity. First tip, if you've repented of sexual sin in your life, is to stay real. That means you need to recognize that sexual temptation is unavoidable in this sex-obsessed culture. Erotic images on billboards, films, television, and a thousand other stimulants are bombarding you every day. You know what? Being a Christian doesn't exempt you from these temptations. The godliest of men and women can fall prey to them. So the first step towards maintaining sexual integrity, get real. Admit to yourself that sexual temptation is a problem that you have to reckon with. Remember John's warning in 1 John 1, 8, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Second tip, stay serious. You should know by now that sexual sin ravages everyone connected with it. But what you may not know is that every sexual fantasy you entertain, every flirtatious conversation you keep up, or every second look you indulge in is the seed for AIDS, adultery, a broken heart, a shattered life. So get serious. If you're entertaining lust, you are dancing on a cliff. Take some concrete action now while you can. Remember what James said in James 1.15, lust, when it is conceived, brings forth sin, and sin brings forth death. Third tip, stay ready. You know, if you really believe an earthquake is coming someday, you're going to prepare for it by developing an emergency plan. And if you really believe sexual temptation is both common and can be lethal, you'll make an emergency plan for that too. Decide in advance what to do when you're tempted, how to distract yourself, who to call, how to escape close calls. You know, even St. Paul admitted in 1 Corinthians 9, 27, like an athlete, I train my body to do what it should, not what it wants to do. Otherwise, I fear that I myself might be declared unfit. Fourth tip, stay connected. Sexual sin thrives in the dark. If you're caught up in any sexual vice, one thing is certain. The secrecy surrounding your behavior is what strengthens its hold on you. However ashamed you may feel about admitting your problem to another person, the reality is this, you can't overcome this on your own. If you could, wouldn't you have done it by now? So let's take a hint from James when he said in James 5.16, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you might be healed. Find a trusted, mature Christian friend to confide in and make that friend a partner in your recovery. Never assume you've reached a point where you no longer need this accountability. Fifth tip, stay brutal. I believe, even though I can't prove it, that there's an 11th commandment somewhere that says, thou shalt not kid thyself. If you're serious about sexual integrity, you're going to distance yourself not only from the sexual sin you're most prone to, whether it's pornography, prostitution, or sexual perversion, you're also going to distance yourself from any person or thing that entices you towards that sin. Now, sometimes even a legitimate activity, certain movies or music or clubs, for example, may be okay for other people to indulge in, but not you. So get brutally honest about your lifestyle. Anything in it that makes you prone to sexual sin has got to go. Remember, Paul said, all things are lawful for me, but not all things are edifying. I will not be brought under the power of anything. I hope you agree with Paul. I'm Joe Dallas, and these are tips from The Game Plan.